Hallelujah. With all these technical difficulties, it's hard to get these thoughts out and uh, clear because it's hard to get into the zone long enough without your stuff falling apart and <laughs> stopping it up, but it's all right. Um, today it was a really good um, understanding, thank God. It's like, I think, as we grow up a little bit and start to change, it, like I think we start to allow ourselves to hear better. We can hear things that we have been have been said before, you know, we're like, why haven't this been made clear? Well, it, it's, the truth is out there, and maybe it's being dissipated a lot of places, and there's no doubt about that, but it's not that it's not there. It's just um, our ears hear better as we grow, or the seasons that God has us in for, for hearing at certain places because we're ready to take it in for whatever reason. So um, this one was about this uh, clip from um, Paris Reedhead called Christ Explains the Law. Um, and it was a really phenomenal uh, teaching for for young believers who are really serious about holy living and things like this, <clears throat> but they don't want to be a legalist. And in their own hearts, you probably have done what I've done. Um, if you if you have, that's something. Um, as you're growing, you have um, spoken truth, but not in the spirit. You're like, I know this is true, and I know it's not coming out right, but it's still. I just, something is just not right, you know, and that, that's, that's a fair statement, okay? Well, this is a word called wanting, okay? I know I did a word a long time ago called wanting nothing, and this has got nothing to do with that at all. That was like an extreme in one area where you, uh, you love Jesus so much that you want nothing else, you know? And this is not really about that. <laughs> and uh, I'm not even sure that's what the text even says. I mean, like, wanting nothing means God, God's going to take care of your every need, and you're wanting nothing, you're lacking nothing. Um, that's just how the new versions say it, so I'm not sure what, what to really think, because wanting could be lacking. I don't know. So anyways, uh, wanting this way is a, is a, is a heart wanting. It's a, it's a heart want. It's a, um, it's a, we're born with a heart that is wanting what we want. And then when we're born again, we want what he wants, okay? And he was describing it like the heart that is, um, you're judged as a murderer if you if you say, I hate your brother or something like that, or you, there's something that you could say, just having a hatred in, in your heart <clears throat> can count you as a murderer. Why? Because of the wanting in your heart. When you really have a hatred in your heart, it's a wanting to do harm <clears throat> to that person, whether kill them or hurt them very bad. And that is a sin, okay? That could lead to, to counsel, judgment, or um, or maybe even um, or even um, subject to hell. I can't remember the wording that he used exactly. I'm trying to make sure I don't mess it up too bad. But uh, it's obviously a very serious thing, and it's like the, the the deed hasn't even been committed, okay? And under that same light, which is a really, really incredible light. I've never heard it this way, so I'm pretty I'm pretty enthralled that uh, it was the wanting in the heart that caused the sin, and then on the other hand, when you're born again, you have a new wanting, and even though you sin, it's not really meaning that you're not born again. It doesn't mean that you've left the Lord. It just means that you've. Uh, it just means that you're learning how to stand in the new wanting. You know, like like just like the murderer, he wants like the person with hatred in his heart doesn't actually do it, but it's the wanting that that he has in his heart, and that that heart is the wrong heart. See, a new heart. It says that he'll he says he'll cleanse you with uh, he'll purify you. He'll uh, sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. You'll have a new heart and a new wanting you have a new heart so your new heart isn't going to go there and if it starts to feel like it wants to go there there's going to be some kind of resistance that's going to stop it from going there or at least stop it from staying there very long you know you're supposed to go into there like whoa 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 but your new heart is going to catch you and stop you from from staying there even if you tried to like let yourself go there for a second you know as you're starting to learn how to live in your new wanting because god gives you a new heart a heart of flesh and a heart of flesh doesn't doesn't stay the same, doesn't see the same, and doesn't act the same. 
but it doesn't mean it doesn't have the same temptations as the heart of stone. The same temptations will come, without a doubt. But the heart of flesh responds differently because it's not the same heart. It's a new wanting, it's a new creature in Christ Jesus that has every intention of doing everything right, pleasing to God. From a pleasing of self to a pleasing of God heart. A heart that pleases self to a heart that pleases God. That is the new wanting. It's a magnificent birthing of the Holy Ghost, born into the family of God after repentance. And now, even though there will be struggles, even though there will be temptations, even though there will be trials, and there will be sin that comes about, and even falling, but because of the new heart, you will have a new wanting, and you won't be wanting to stay there. And just the fact that you are wanting to stay there, and you don't have a respect for the uh, the next stage is uh, is okay too so this one really helped me understand because I, I could see people who do stupid things and I knew I did stupid things it took me Let's see, I'm over, I've been doing this for a little over seven years now. Totally committed my life to Jesus Christ. Um, hands down, and I have messed up a lot. It took me about five years to get full victory over um, sin. The one that was probably my worst um, addiction. It took me about five years, almost five years to get full victory. And I've been walking in full victory for over two years now. And it didn't mean that I didn't have a new heart then, because I certainly did, because it didn't used to concern me, because my heart of stone had turned away from the Lord. So it's a check-in to see, do you have a heart that is sensitive to sin? Do you have a heart that is sensitive to sin? Gross immorality and sin. And the little things, too, that may not lead to death, okay? A new heart that is of God and it is of Christ, that is a heart of flesh, a new heart, and a new wanting, will never feel comfortable in the list of obvious damnation sins. They'll never feel that way. If you're a new heart, you will not feel comfortable in any of those things. You know, he talks about the effeminate will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So, a new heart will not want to be effeminate. A man will not want to prance around like a female in any sense. You're not going to want to carry yourself like an abomination in an effeminate way. You're going to carry yourself as a man. A man will carry himself as a man. And uh, I don't know if that can be reversed. I'm not going to say that, but just stands to reason that a woman should not be prancing around as a man. I, I know that piece right there is not in that exact lineup of Scripture, but I do know that it is an abomination in another Scripture for a woman to pre present herself as a man. It is an abomination in God's eyes. A woman is feminine and a man is masculine. That is how God wants it to be. Women is feminine and God, a man is uh, masculine. And that is how we are supposed to act. So even though you're not a cross-dresser, so across the board, across the board, or a woman carrying herself in an extremely butch kind of way, it doesn't have to be that extreme, but um, women should be feminine and a man should be masculine, okay? So I'm just saying that these, when you're born again, truly, you're not. there's things that are wrong that will not be a part of your new heart. Your, heart. your new heart will not be comfortable there. There will be a resistance and there will be a war. You will not be comfortable there. 
Do I believe you can lose your salvation? Yes, I absolutely believe you can turn from God. Okay, what I mean by that, I know you can get a new heart and it will not be comfortable and all that stuff, but you can eventually shut the door so hard that um, you just, you really can live in sin that does lead to death comfortably. Okay, when you go there, I believe you're going to hell. I believe that if you can comfortably live in that list of sin, that there's no doubt in my mind that you're going to hell. Okay? Um, that's my own opinion. Okay? I'd rather just be on the safe side and say it's my... I used to be even more strict than that before, but now that I'm learning about Christ explaining the law from my hero, Paris Reedhead, he's describing it as a wanting. Okay? Now, I'm just going to say, if you do have a heart that has a new wanting, a heart of flesh... Okay, it's not about obeying rules and getting it right so you can go to heaven. Okay, your works are not going to save you. But Christ's blood washes you clean. You're truly regenerate of the Holy Spirit. You're born into the family of God. Because you, through baptism and repentance and all these things, there's a sealer of the baptism. You're not saved when you're baptized. I don't, I'm not into the baptism or regeneration. I know that there's something scriptural that might look like that, but I don't really, um, I don't believe that's a... Um, I, don't, I believe that's a very dangerous territory to get into. So anyways, so when you're changed for real, you're, you're never going to be comfortable in those obvious um, sins that lead to death. You'll never be comfortable there. Only people who are going to hell are people who are comfortable there, okay? And people who have not come to Jesus Christ. There are people out there with morale that is that looks like they might try to avoid most of those things, but you'll find... Like a lot of times, whether they're nice or mean or whatever at all, if they're willing to ex ignore Jesus Christ, you're going to find one of those things in there somewhere. Or they're going to be a drunkard or whatever. I don't know how moral or upstanding they are, whatever. It's really irrelevant because it's you know they ignore Jesus. They're still they're still going to go to hell. You must be born into the family of God. Is what we're going to be judged by. Are you born of the family of God? Jesus is the only way to heaven. Either you know Jesus or you don't. So this is really helping me a lot because I'm trying to lay this down. I know this is not coming out as good as I was ho hoping it would. But I'm going to keep on preaching it until I know it's got enough out. And it's in regards to the wanting. Okay, And yes, you can have a new wanting, but yes, you can lose that wanting. Okay, And in that, I believe that you would be lost. You know, When I, when I was younger, I did struggle with sin. And I don't say that I was lost then, because I was in sin, a lot of sin. I was messing up bad and um, all kinds of you know, fornication and all that stuff. I was there. I was in the dance clubs and, you know, acting like a freak. But I was really born again. And it took me a while, so I was struggling with it. And finally, I had to make a choice. And I made it un un accidental in, in my despair, conscious choice, and let God go. I, I ended the war, and I no longer had that wanting anymore. I no longer had that wanting anymore. I had this big sign in the back of my window that said, Jesus is Lord. And I took it down because the resistance was killing me. I was like trying to live two lives. And I said, I can't do the middle road thing. Maybe that means I was lost. I don't know. But then I, I remembered finalizing it and taking that out of there and said, I don't want the pressure anymore. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. And it felt really good to be at peace picking my side because I couldn't handle I didn't know how to do it right be anymore you know so maybe God's mercy would have taken care of me then I don't know I would just assume not I don't know is what it's all about. For those that genuine have a genuine eternal heart that does want to please an eternal awesome holy God separate for the works of God I believe their lives are going to be drastically different from those of the world and drastically different from those who even go to church and profess faith I believe the chosen few 
are going to be drastically different than the masses of church people. They might not look as good under sermon notes. I know that. They might not look as good. Like I said, there's a lot of people in the churches who maybe have never even messed around like that when they were when they were growing up. So and you can watch me turn my life and radically be converted by born of the Spirit of God and, and then uh, be around somebody who's never messed up and I'm still messing up and I'm truly born again and maybe they're not, you know? But at least I got there eventually because God starts to touch on all the issues. Not just all the big obvious things. I think that's where we begin at. You'll be born again and um, have a wanting that's, that defies all the obvious sins that lead to death. And then God starts to purify you and work on your selfishness. He starts to work on your arrogance. He starts to work on your vanity. He starts to work on the little things that maybe don't lead to death, but they certainly do grieve the Holy Spirit. And they certainly do open the door to the Satan to mess up your life. You know, maybe they do lead to hell, some of those things. I, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to just say, listen, These are the Bible does describe two different kinds of sins, some that lead to hell and some that, that, don't, that don't. And those are the ones he starts to deal with in sanctification after. Okay, But I'm positive, I'm, I believe that if you were to continuously live in these sins that are in the lists that he blames of not going to heaven, then yes, you're definitely not going to heaven and you will go to hell. So I'm gonna record, I'm gonna re-record this another time, but this is um, some stuff I would like to lay down um, about the new heart. I think that's all.